Hello, my name is Caroline Cavens and this is 48 Minutes, a podcast with inspiring leaders. In today's episode, I talk to Dick Gosset, who is one of Belgian stars in the classical music scene. Dirk is an internationally acclaimed conductor, a work-winning composer, and has worked with the world's leading orchestras. I saw Dirk for the first time last year at Tomorrowland, where he did a very nice crossover project. I talked to Dirk about his transition from a very hectic lifestyle into a lockdown, about intercultural differences in the music scene, and about the way he manages stress. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome, Dirk. Let's get started. It's my pleasure. <laughs> uh, Dirk, 2020 for you, um, it's a special year. Uh, it's, I think it's a special year for, for uh, classical music in Flanders because I also saw Clara uh, celebrate this, their 20, her 20th birthday. Uh, it's your 60th birthday this year uh, with an impressive career of 40 years. Um, and then I was scrolling through the timeline on your website and it says March 13th. <laughs> lockdown. Complete lockdown, <laughs> thanks to COVID. Time for introspection, meditation and composition. So my question, how have you um, experienced the past? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that, that's what I did. It, it, it was supposed to be one of the most important yeah. years in, in my professional career. So uh, I think in my life, I consider every day uh, important. I mean, whatever, okay. it, whether it's a birthday or a new year or Christmas or a Monday or, or, or a Sunday, every, every day is important. Because my philosophy is that every day you should live as it was the last day because life yeah. is full of surprises. Um, and life can, can, can bring us in various directions in a very uh, unexpected way. So I live as every day is the last one. So that means mm -hmm. that I live uh, quite, um, quite intense. But um, I, I, I was uh, planning this celebration here, double celebration here for many years. I mean, my birthday, I have nothing in control because you're just born on a specific day, in a specific year. And every day, every year it counts, like one, two, three, four, yeah. five, and one day it ends. So this, this, this is nothing special. I mean, there's no difference between 59, 61, or 19, or, or mm -hmm. 21, or 29, or 31. But symbolically for our society, 60 means, means something. But which is more important for me, which was more important, is to celebrate 40 years uh, in, in music. Mm -hmm. 40 years of uh, passion, 40 years of following my, my inner voice and my inner, inner path. And uh, this celebration, I, um, uh, I was thinking about it for, for a couple of years in advance because it's not something uh, you think about uh, on a Monday and celebrate it on a, on a yeah. Friday. So yeah. even, even one or two years in advance, I was already thinking about it. Should I do something or not? So I talked to a couple of friends and some said, it's too early, let's wait till 65 or 70 or... Yeah. But then I, maybe, maybe it will be too late. Maybe yeah, I, I exactly. will be dead already, yeah. who knows? So other people, uh, very close friends, they said, why not? I mean, 40 years, it's a good figure. So, so I started uh, contacting some people and, and just developing some concepts. And one of the concepts was... Um, to make a recording of my symphonic works, work that I have written in the past 10 years, mm -hmm. um, because you have to hire an orchestra, a studio, etc., etc. So that was on the rail, and that's actually the only project that um, I succeeded to, uh, to bring to an end. But all the other, all the other projects were on the rails. Um, there was an opening concert at the Carnegie Hall, Hall in New York, which is one of the most yeah. important halls in the, uh, in the world. Uh, when, when it comes to classical music, there was um, uh, concerts in many, many cities, many countries, in my own country, in my own village, where we are now, in Dessel oh, yeah. My My uh, the community, the mayor of my community, uh, she said, well, you should we should celebrate your birthday yeah. uh, through gala concerts oh, and, and, nice. and the local venue. So that, that means a lot for me, I mean, um, because yeah. at the end, I, I, I live here. Then there were concerts in, in, in Ghent, um, then in, in Bolzar and Brussels, etc., etc., etc. And then, yeah, there is a uh, March 13, uh, 14, 15, where all of a sudden we realized that a very small animal called uh, 
Corona, eh, COVID-19, yeah. Um, yeah, brought an end to our, uh, our way of living. And <clears throat> in the beginning, like many of us, we had no idea how long it, it would no. take. Uh, we would think maybe it's only a month or, yeah. or two months, or maybe in the summer it will be gone. Mm -hmm. But then we realized in the summer it was not gone. Now we are six months later, and who knows what the future brings us. So this is why... Um, to quote you what, you, what you saw on my website, that from then on there was time for, for something else. And as I was, I was always addicted to, to, to my professional life, to traveling. Yeah. I travel a lot. Um, it, really, it, it sounds crazy, but sometimes on a Monday morning, I'm rehearsing in Brussels. On a Wednesday, I'm in London. On a Friday, I'm in, I'm in New York or Philadelphia. I do my right. concerts yeah. there. I come. It's hectic. It's crazy. So half of my time. Uh, I, I, I live on the plane, and you get used to it. Uh, it it's a yeah. drug. You, it, it becomes your second uh, second nature. You become addicted to it, and then all of a sudden, the you're at home. So the first the first Rehab. it's like someone who is addicted to drugs or yeah. to alcohol. Uh, when you have to kick off, you, you yeah yeah you, you go like oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god. <laughs> but now I'm addicted to the life I'm I'm, I'm living now because with a, a complete different energy and a complete different philosophy. I look back at the, 40, at the, at the past 40 years, especially the last five years, five, five to 10 years. And then I ask myself, was it necessary to, to do all that? What, what, at the end, as a human being, what, what counts is which footprint you leave in people's minds and in people's mm -hmm. heart. So, and I, I, I believe doing concerts is important, but it's very volatile. Yeah, you do a concert, there are a couple of hundred people. In the case of Tomorrowland, there are... Uh, yeah, big audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and, and then it's gone. I mean, it's... Okay, maybe it stays in your, in your, in your memory, but, but then it's gone. While when a painter paints a canvas or yeah. a, a composer writes a piece of music, it's forever, mm -hmm. whatever that means. Uh, yeah. I don't know if, if forever exists, but at least it's for the yeah. next uh, generations. So does that mean you uh, you've done a lot of composing? Yeah, I've done I've done a lot of composing, um, and and this is remarkable. I always uh, do a lot of composing, but what is different that there were no commissions, no obligations, no deadlines. Mm -hmm. Normally, as a composer, you work uh, for uh, uh, you work for for somebody or yeah. somebody who gives you a commission, and that somebody can be a private person, can be an orchestra, can be a musician. He or she gives you uh, a commission to write a piece for for, yeah. for the instrument, and then you have a contract, you have a deadline, you have a performance. So Isn't business. Is it difficult to be creative under pressure? Is it difficult? Uh, I th I, th I think a lot of composers in the past uh, worked with uh, commissions and with with deadlines. Mm -hmm. The best friend of an artist is a deadline. Yeah, is the best friend. It's the, the, it's the worst enemy, but at the same time, it's the best friend. Mm -hmm. It's like if you have your exam, the date of your exam, it's your biggest enemy, but also your best friend. Because you know that day, that time, you're in front of your professor yeah. and you, you, you have to do it. Or, and yeah. you succeed or you, or, or you fail. But does it work with creativity? Um, you, I, I think, I think uh, it, it, it does influence uh, the uh, creativity. That's what I discovered also. And I discovered something. Uh, I knew it was inside myself uh, since I was 15, 16, 17. Because there, I had no watch. In those days, I had no watch. Mm -hmm. I, I was free. Free as a bird. There was yeah. no pressure from the society, from the email. Well, in those days, there, there was not email, but there were kind of emails, uh, the phones, the fax, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I, 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 every day I stood up and I had the time in front of me. I could, I could do whatever I wanted. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I did, I remember, was uh, building in a structure in my life because we need to have a structure. We wake up, we go yeah. to bed, we have to eat, etc. So, mm -hmm. uh, But these days were in terms of... Uh, uh, in terms of, of, of organizing my freedom. These days were, were just magic. Yeah. And, then, and then all of a sudden it changed. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I graduated and <clears throat> I had my first successes uh, in music, it changed because then the society is taking over. Yeah. 
because then you, you work with a manager and they say, hey, now you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. Because I wanted this, because yeah. I, I, I yeah, yeah. wanted I could have said no. There are artists that say no, they say no, I want to have my agenda for myself. Mm -hmm. I know many of those artists, very interesting people, uh, fascinating people, uh, amazing talents, mm -hmm. but they're still in their in, 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 in their room, waiting, waiting okay. for for the for the phone phone yeah. call from 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 wherever. It's not the way. This, it's not happening like this. Building a career based on your talents, you need marketing. You, you need you need to have to have a vision. You need to have a strategy. Mm -hmm. You need to have you you you, are, you you need to be aware of your unique selling point, etc. Yeah. etc. This is all the business side of the thing. But then all of a sudden, at the age of 20, 21, it changed, yeah. and when I say 20 plus 40, it's 60, it's yeah. where we are now. And all of a sudden, again, it was 40 years ago that I had that free time for myself. This, this time comes back yeah. on my table. And it's such a luxurious uh, environment in which, inspiring environment, in which I can, I, 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 I can do what I, what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Again, I build my own structure. We, yeah. we, we need, we are living creatures, and I think, we are all born lazy, I'm sure. We are all born lazy. Yeah, that's I for am. sure. Yeah, we are all lazy. We are all lazy, but we have to organize a little bit. If we want to achieve something in life, we have to organize our, our, our lives. So the result of the, of, the, of the COVID, that all of a sudden I had that free time, I could back, go back to my adolescent, uh, adolescent years, to my, to my, to my, almost to my childhood, where, again, I, I could... I could do whatever I do. And I, I sat at the piano. I had no deadline. I had no commission, no rehearsals. <clears throat> okay, the emails are always there. Um, and the iPhone is always there. But uh, I tried to switch it off, don't look at my computer, and just just, just be, just live and be. I, again, I, I tried to connect more with the nature, with Mother mm -hmm. Nature. Uh, it was a, a liaison that I, it was a connection that I uh, lost a little bit, mm -hmm. like many of us. Huh? Yeah. We just live, we, we, we live with the, with the eyes and the head towards, towards, towards the ground, where actually yeah. life, life is up. Yeah. So for many, many years, I, I was only looking, looking down, yeah. uh, uh, literally down. Uh, and, uh, and now all of a sudden, yeah, I, 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 this COVID gave me so much oxygen and yeah. so much... Uh, energy that that wow I'm, I'm happier than ever yeah. happier than, than yeah. ever and this is something very very awkward that i will say but for me i would like to continue that that kind of life and i hope covid will 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 go away very soon but for myself uh, i i uh, I'm, I'm really doubting should i go back to the hectic crazy yeah. life or should i go for the other hectic crazy life but controlled by myself and not mm -hmm. by the society yeah. and by others. Uh, interesting, uh, but I can I can tell you're very happy. You look really happy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy. I, I have a lot of energy. <clears throat> I, I'm I'm, I'm uh, well. What is happiness? Huh? I mean, it's very very hard to say what happiness is. Um, but um, uh, yeah, I feel I feel good. I feel good. I feel I I feel in balance with 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 yeah. myself. Um, we all, we all, at some point, want, want to be someone. And mm -hmm. at some point, sometimes, we also want to be someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and more than ever, younger generation, uh, generations are, are dictated by publicity, by TV, by social media. Yeah. Um, the, way, the way fashion is presented uh, into the world, it's all models, uh, skinny, mm -hmm. uh, whatever, good looking, beautiful, mm -hmm. blah. This is not real life. This is fake. Yeah. This is all fake. And I believe that, um, that a lot of uh, multinationals and a lot of fashion, a lot of media, um, with all my respect, are really dictating how we should mm -hmm. uh, live, how we should behave, how we should think, what we should wear, in order to be part of the of the of the of the community, mm -hmm. and uh, I think you need to be very strong 
and you need to be you need to need, you need to develop your your personality and listen to your inner voice mm -hmm. in order to maybe take another direction uh, yep. because at the end those personalities in, in the beginning you were talking about personality for me this is personality authentic yeah. people whatever they do whatever they say but authentic people that reflects what is living inside their mind and inside inside their, their body and sometimes it takes a a lifetime yeah. and, a, and, a, and, a, and a COVID period, COVID-ish <laughs> period, uh, um, to, to discover this and to be, and try to be an example for for for, for the others uh, with yeah. all the complexities and and, and and the perfect issues and the imper imperfections, because this is something beautiful on people. This is the imperfections. I hate perfect people. Yeah. I hate perfect people. Or also people that beauty. pretend to be to be perfect, yeah. and, and in all terms, in knowledge, but also in beauty. I, I hate super beauties. I, yeah. I, 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 I can't watch super beauty, yeah. beauty people. No, but but somebody who has a little scar or a little, yeah. you know, little, I, I love it because yeah. it's a part of of their personality. Okay, nice. Um, I told you. Uh, I don't know so much about classical music, so so my question would be: I've always been fascinated by the uh, phenomenon of a conductor. Uh, what what would happen if there wouldn't be a conductor? Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> well, a, lo a lot of a lot of people that, that like music but doesn't know music in particular have the same question: uh, What is happening? Then I also have a, a question. Uh, 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 I fly a lot around the world, two times a year sometimes, uh, which is 60, I don't know, 40,000 miles, whatever. Um, a plane can perfectly fly without, without a yeah. pilot, yeah. but still there is a pilot. Yeah. What is he doing? Yeah. Yeah. That's also my question. What, what, why? Why are you here? Yeah. I feel safer. I feel safer when I take a plane yeah. uh, that, that there are two guys or sometimes four, four guys, you know. Yeah. Uh, but what is a, a conductor? It, it's a complex. It's a complex thing. Could orchestras play without the conductor? Yes, they can. They can. Yeah, they can. They can. But would it? Would the sound and the result be the same? No, it would be a mm -hmm. catastrophe. I tell you why. Because if a, a composer, first of all, a composer communicates through putting his music on a piece of paper yeah, yeah. Uh, with notes and staves and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. So when he hands it over to a musician, he or she can play it. Mm -hmm. But there are many ways of playing that mm -hmm. type of music. So if you take the Moonshine Sonata by Beethoven mm -hmm. or any piece for piano solo, and you listen to five different performers, you will hear five times the same piece of music but five times something completely different. Different color, different speeds. Some people will play it with uh, more affection. Other people will play it with less affection, mm -hmm. etc., etc. Okay, yeah. This is only one person. Mm -hmm. If I distribute my music to 80 people mm -hmm. and say, hey guys, do your thing. Yeah. Can, you, can you imagine? It, it, it is yeah. catastrophe. No, no, no. So, you need a conductor for many reasons. First of all, to organize that everybody is really playing, playing together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the music at some point has to start together, has to finish together. Mm -hmm. And within, within the technical and rhythmical uh, 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 flow of the piece, it has to be, be together from second to second. Mm -hmm. This is one thing. The second thing, and this is the most important thing. It is the conductor that gives his interpretation. He is going to say to 80 people how we will perform this music, knowing that maybe half of the people will not agree. Half of the people will say, yeah, but I don't like it. I, I, I don't like it. I, I don't like this color on the wall. I would, I, I, I would, I would make it darker. I would make it lighter. I, you see? And then comes maybe for me the most, the most important thing. It's the psychology, mm -hmm. how, how you address yourself to 60, 70, 80 people that are all top people in their own right, 
they're all educated and raised to be prima donnas, mm -hmm. but there can only be one concert master. And yeah. some people have to play the second violin, and some people have to play the third flute. Yeah. It doesn't mean that the first that the first flute is better than the third, but but th this is the the structure of a, of, of of an orchestra. So you, uh, in order to to do your profession on a, on a, on, a, on a world level, it's a combination of musicality, practical musicality, musical issues, controlling musical issues, uh, personality. Mm -hmm. Uh, character, charisma, and being uh, an educator, and uh, you have to be passionate about what you mm -hmm. do without being an actor. Some conductors are acting yeah. as if, like in all professions, yeah. but this you can, you, can, you can smell in one second if somebody yeah. is real or somebody is fake. Uh, so you have to be real, you really have to be real. And then you have a chance that some people, some orchestras will pick you up and give you an opportunity to, to, conduct, uh, to conduct an orchestra. And mm -hmm. that's how you, how you build a career. So I started uh, exactly 40 years ago. I was still a child at 20, you're still a child. Doing this profession, still a yeah. child. So, and of course I had, I, I had to learn a lot. I, I learned at the Conservatory of Music. I, I, I learned some things, but there you only learn uh, 10% of the job. So mm -hmm. all the rest you have to learn being in front of, uh, of, of, of the orchestra, uh, of the orchestra and talking to people, etc., etc., etc. And uh, I, I have to say that it took me, it took me 20, 25 years mm -hmm. to, 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 to become who I, who I am now as a conductor, I mean. Um, um, and, and every time I, I, I my, the level of my profession uh, grew every time I was collaborating with people that were better than I was. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So every time when I came in front of an orchestra that was better than I was, or more developed, more experienced, then I, I always, always learned. And it's like you are climbing the, the, the a, a mountain, mm -hmm. huh? and you, you you start downstairs, and then you have, yeah. still have a million steps to go. But if you continue every day, at some points. You have the last step, yeah. and then and then you see you are on the top of the mountain, yeah. and you see the horizon. And the only thing you can do when you are on the top of the mountain, it's going down again and climbing another mountain. There. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because you cannot climb the air and the sky. Yeah. Have you reached the top? Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Hopefully not. No. No, 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 hopefully not, because that must be boring. When you're yeah. on, on the top of the mountain, yeah. it's, it's boring. What else? Yeah. Because you spend a lifetime yeah. going up, 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 and then all, all of a sudden you are there. So that mm -hmm. means that, that your life has no meaning anymore. Yeah. So, I mean, the idea is to, to, to grow every day, every day trying to become better and, uh, and better. And um, yeah. yeah, it's a long okay. way. I, uh, a few years ago, I, I climbed um, Mont Blanc, and uh, I must say I actually appreciated more the the, the ascent than uh, yeah. the top. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's easy. easy. Going but down is always easy. Yeah, <laughs> going down is always yeah. easy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, how would um, musicians who have worked with you describe you? How would who? Musicians who have worked with you. How would they describe you? Mm. I'm sure you, you wow, will. that's a difficult one. I, I, <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I uh, can't. Uh, it's hard to say. But from the rumors, the rumors I yeah. hear, from the rumors, I think it's quite positive because otherwise I would not be doing this for forty years. Otherwise, after a couple of years, it, 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 the path would have gone somewhere else. So the fact that I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm so busy. Uh, the fact that I'm in front of orchestras every day, every day, every other day in normal life means that there must be something. Mm -hmm. And what it is, I, I, I hope, I hope it is, I'm, I'm, I'm very strict, but on the same time, very easygoing mm -hmm. with, with the people. And you can, you, you can, I think it's a very important attitude. It's, um, what is important, I think, is trust. You have to trust people. Mm -hmm. Some conductors, don't trust, they want to be in control of everything because they think 
I'm on the top of that mountain and yeah. they look they look down to musicians as as they were the servants, yeah. uh, and, and then they, they are like dictators, you know, they yeah. say, no, they, they want to control everything. I also control everything because it's my job. I have to yeah. control everything. Every single beat of a triangle or a pizzicato, in, in this, I have to control everything. Yeah. But controlling through giving freedom, mm -hmm. yeah, giving freedom. And you only can give freedom when you trust people. Mm -hmm. When you trust people, so it's it's leadership for me. It's um, it's give and take. It's give and take. It's 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 getting the best out of everything, of of every everything and everybody. Mm -hmm. This is very important. And that's what I said earlier. In order to achieve that 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 level of, of collaboration, you need you need to be an excellent musician, um, very honest and. Um, yeah, you have to know how people in a group react. Because when you talk to an individual, uh, somebody can be easygoing, somebody can be difficult, but one-to-one -one is always easier than working with the same person in, yeah. in, in a group. Sometimes when you, when you, sometimes I know very, 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 very easygoing people from the moment you talk with them one to one. When you put them in a group, they became anim they become animals. They become <laughs> horrible people, horrible, <laughs> because they, they 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 do horrible horrible yeah. things. But when you talk to them again, then they say, "Oh, we are very innocent." Yeah. And uh, you you see in the school, uh, we've yeah. all been in school with 20, yeah. 20 girls and boys, and there were always always yeah. people with strong personalities, uh, weak personalities, uh, but. How would musicians describe me? I think I'm very efficient. I'm always well prepared, mm -hmm. uh, perfectly prepared, as per perfectly as perfect as possible, because of respect for myself and respect of the others. Um, I, I, I think I'm very good in time management. I'm not wasting time, uh, which is important. I mean, mm -hmm. it, ha it has to go forward. I, I, I believe in music. I, I have a personality, I'm sure. I'm sure I have I have something to say. I I, I can create an, uh, a, 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 a magic world uh, uh, around each composition, uh, and this is the advantage of being a conductor and a composer. Because when a conductor conductor looks at the at the music and the score of of, of, of a composer, he sees what he what he is seeing. Mm -hmm. When I look at a score, I can see how this composer came to that result. I can see yeah. all the, the techniques, all the structures, mm -hmm. all the hidden layers yeah. that someone else doesn't, doesn't, doesn't yeah. see. And, and this is a, an advantage because you can take risks that other people don't want to mm -hmm. take because they say, no, 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 I, I do it. I follow the book. I, 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 I follow the book. Yeah. Other people can say, yeah, but you can also interpret the mm -hmm. book. It's like, it's like the Bible and the Quran. It's, it's the same thing. Some people read what they see yeah. and some people interpret. And we, if you see to, to, to what this can lead, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, yeah, the, yeah. the people in the Middle Ages that, that literally wrote the Bible and wrote what was written. Oh my God. Even today, people that are reading the Quran, oh my God. Yeah. You can interpret it or you can... And still, if, if, if you read what, if you see what you read, it, it is still an interpretation. Yeah. So I think these are my, uh, my, my strong points. And, 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 and maybe on top of that, which has nothing to do with music, which is even today in, in those commercial days, even, even more important than, than all the rest, is the communication with the clients. Mm -hmm. For many years, classical musicians and orchestras all over the world they were sitting, they behaved like sitting in a golden chair. Mm -hmm. And they said like, okay, we are the uh, uh, performers of the classical music, the best music ever written, uh, the most intelligent, the most beautiful, the most uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. And people have to come to us and we, we, we don't care if they come or they don't come, we, we don't care. I'm, I'm a person that I, I do care. Mm -hmm. I, I, I perform for, for audience. Yeah. And sometimes audience can be connoisseurs and can be people that don't know anything at all. And yeah. I believe, this is very personal, I believe everybody has the right, if, if somebody does the effort to come to a concert hall and 
buys a ticket to hear my music or other people's music, they have the right to 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 be welcomed. Yeah. Uh, because most of the time the conductor is with his back to, to <laughs> towards the audience. Uh, they have the right to be welcomed. They have the right to be informed what's 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 on the program, not only yeah. the titles on the program, but what's the what's the deeper layers of the music. Mm-hmm. Some people inform themselves in advance, but not everybody. Come, let, let, let's face it. I mean, not everybody. Huh? Um, so, I, I think I'm different in, in, in all those in all, in all those aspects. Uh, uh, most of the times, in 99% of the cases, I turn my back towards the orchestra and, and address myself to the audience and say, at least welcome. Tonight we are going to hear this. And this music is on the program. Because, 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 mm-hmm. and then I say a little, a little word, why this or this piece is, uh, why why this or this piece is, um, is 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 important or less important or or, or, or more important. Yeah. So I, I want to build a connection with uh, with uh, with uh, with the listeners. Yeah. yeah, and this this is my my yeah I think my unique selling point. A customer centric yeah. conductor. <laughs> um, is it stressful? Uh, to me, it seems very stressful uh, job being conductor. Stressful. Yeah, because it, it's um, <coughs> once you start, it's, yeah. it's almost like a machine. You cannot just stop and take yeah. a break. Yeah, uh, uh, there are different. F- uh, or with the preparation, uh, when what has caused you the most stress? Yeah, uh, there are different types of stress. Um, yeah, uh, in in my profession uh, and and in my life, I experience stress when I'm in a situation that I can't control. Mm-hmm. Then I'm in a stress. Yeah, and I think it's for a lot of us, I guess. <laughs> if you go to an exam and you only studied half of the pages. Then you are in stress because if the professor goes to the end of the book and he says, "Hey, page fifty-nine, can you tell me shit?" Yeah, yeah that should not. Ha- then you have stress. Yeah. that should not happen. That should not happen. In order to avoid this, you have to study the whole thing and be prepared. You have to go beyond, far beyond. Um, but sometimes I'm in a stress because sometimes I. I I was about to miss a plane. I was mm-hmm. about to to be late at the rehearsal. That that kind of things and that type of stress, I avoid. I don't I don't want that type because it's no. it's, it's useless stress. So every time when I have to catch a, a flight early morning in Zaventem, I always go to the airport the night before. Always. Wow. I never go the day itself yeah. because it happened to me when I take the car. There was a car accident. I was about to miss a plane. Yeah. I took the train, there was a strike, or there was whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I reorganized my, my life in a more easy way and avoid, avoid all the stress. But that's um, what you control. Yeah, 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 yeah. And still, if you think you are in control of everything, then no. something will happen. That, yeah. that, that. Sometimes stress outside my own control. I'm in front of an orchestra. I rehearsed one, two, three days. The fourth day we have a concert, and one of the soloists got uh, got sick. Mm. I cannot <laughs> control it. I, 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 I cannot control it. Or somebody is late for a concert. Or mm-hmm. it, 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 it happens. Something stupid. I, w- I was doing a project. I was doing a project in Belgium with four musicians, non-European musicians, and the concert was in Mechelen. Mm-hmm. And those person, this person thought it was in Mechelen. Maglet, maglet, you know. Yeah. So that kind of thing that 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 gives me stress. Yeah. yeah. But also lately, I have no stress anymore. I have, I have, I have no, because some something happened in in in. I'm I'm living with a with a with a with a fantastic lady, and um, and she lost her daughter, as probably you know. Yeah. yeah. She lost her daughter in awful circumstances, and yeah. since that day, which is now seven days ago, there are no problems anymore. Nothing is a problem. Mm-hmm. After having lived uh, 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 a drama like this, nothing is a, is a problem. Yeah. It was a horrible situation, but but the thing that we learned that 
every day can be the last, of course, mm -hmm. that, that I already told you uh, before this interview, but, but nothing is a problem anymore. Mm -hmm. If you have a car accident, okay. So what? Uh, you buy a new car, you repair it, but when you lose a person, then, then it's gone forever, you know. And this, uh, this helped me a lot, unfortunately, this dreadful, dramatic situation uh, uh, helped me a lot in, um, in developing a, a very stressless life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I, don't yeah. I mean, if I, if I see around me, people are creating so many problems yeah. about nothing yeah. about nothing if i if i see in, in this COVID period if i hear all the bullshits on the media about shall we celebrate christmas yes or no with four people or three or five or six <laughs> i mean come on come on yeah. will st nicholas come yes or no i don't give a shit. i mean yeah. uh and I can understand that for some people that, that are locked up in an elderly house that cannot see their children. Of mm -hmm. course, it's a drama. Of course, I, on the human side, I understand everything. Mm -hmm. But these are not, 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 not problems. Yeah. As long as you breathe, as long as you live in this part of the world, which, which, which is fantastic, yeah. it's fantastic. People are complaining about everything. I have traveled the world. I have, I have, I have been everywhere, almost everywhere. I have lived almost everywhere. I have lived in the 23 de Janeiro in, in Venezuela. I have done projects in India. I was in everywhere, Australia, South America, everywhere. In the slums of New York, the slums of, uh, of Philadelphia, ev everywhere, everywhere. We are so lucky. Yeah. And people, people are complaining every day. I, I, I get sick, I get sick of, 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 yeah. of this uh, situation. You know? yeah. Uh, That's why I'm happy. <laughs> I hear what you say. Um, as you just said, you, you've been uh, contacting uh, orchestras from all over the world. Is it is it different for different cultures? Yes, it is different. Uh, Western classical music, it is something that was created in Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the. Classical composers, starting 15th century, 15th century, uh, with, the, with the Flemish composers, the Flemish masters, and then the Baroque, etc., etc., etc. All those composers were European-based. Yeah. So that means classical music, it's in the DNA mm -hmm. of the European tradition. Okay. It's not our property. It's no. music is for everybody, mm -hmm. for everybody. So later on in the music history, non-Western cultures started to play and study Western music. Mm -hmm. There are different ways in reproducing classical music. You can read a score and do exactly what is written on, yeah. on a paper. And I'm referring to uh, Asian people, yeah, for example. That's what I want to do. There used to be, used to be, now it's changed, but there used to be a time that a lot of Asian musicians copied. Mm -hmm. They copied. Like they copied in many other fields as well. <laughs> they just copied. They studied everything and they, and they copied. Yeah. And you know what? They became good. They became great because yeah. they made it into the final of the Queen Elizabeth competition. Mm -hmm, yeah. Really great, technically, everything. Even the emotions, they study the emotions. <laughs> I think even here and there, and I, 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 I'm sure. But it, it didn't come out yeah. of their cells, of their, of, it was not in their DNA. Mm -hmm. It has changed. Now, a lot of Asians are studying in Europe or, or, or in, the, in the US. So, so this problem is gone. But still, there are some differences. Um, I remember 25 years ago when I first conducted in China, in Shanghai, I um, tried to explain what I wanted to the musicians through a translator, which was already yeah. diffi difficult. You know how difficult <laughs> the Chinese language is? Yeah, it's technical. Um, yeah. I was, at some point, I was talking about different grades of red 
So it was something very, very romantic. And I tried to understand, I, 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 I tried to explain that or you can make something dark red or just a hint of red or, or a deep red or a red with a little bit of, mm -hmm. of black inside. I was trying to explain, oh, yeah. which is already difficult for uh, a European person to understand. So those Chinese people, they were looking at me like, I came from another planet, you know. <laughs> what, is what is this guy yeah. talking about? What, what, is, what, what is he talking about? And then I talked to my translator. We had very interesting uh, conversations. And next day, again and again and again, and it never changed. They never picked up, some, picked up, up something from what I said. And then the translator said, Maestro, we have to tell you something. So now, now it's yeah. going to come. He said, those people, especially the older generation that is playing in the orchestra, they didn't choose for this profession. Oh. When there were children going to the music school, and it was like this in China yeah. until recent times, it was the system that decided what you would do in life. Wow. You, would, you had long legs, you would go to sport, you have long arms, you would go to uh, uh, basketball, yep. uh, you have a nice face and, and yep. you have uh, short fingers, you, yep. play, you play the violin, etc. So those people were playing music as a profession. They yeah. never played music at home. Yep. They just went to the rehearsal, opened the violin case, just did what <laughs> they learned, whatever the maestro said, yep. and when the rehearsal was over, the violin went back to the case. Yep. That's it. These days are gone. No These days are gone. Mm -hmm. But I experienced those days 25, 30 years ago. Yeah. And um, it was quite a, quite a shock, actually. I, I didn't know it existed. I thought that everybody that played an instrument played it because of passion. Yeah. But apparently, it, in some parts of the world, it's not, the, it's not the case. And of course, sometimes when I worked in Latin America, uh, with great people. I love, I love Latin America. I love uh, South America. Love work. I love the people. I love the old cultures, the, the Mayas, the Aztec, the Olmec, the Tolmec, mm -hmm. uh, blah, blah, blah. It, it's fantastic. I love the people. I love the literature. I'm in love of, uh, with uh, Garcia Marquez, uh, with Octavio Paz. Um, I love it. But yeah, discipline, for example, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not one of the words that no. is in their dictionary. Uh, uh, people come late. The first time I was conducting in Ecuador um, and uh, the rehearsal started at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm always there at least one and a half hour before. Well, yeah. So I was there. The whole building was closed. I said, <laughs> okay, maybe it's not today. It's not, I was looking in my papers. No, it's today. So I was waiting for uh, half an hour. Nobody yeah. I was waiting for another half an hour. But there came a, a man. <laughs> opening the door and I said to him, yeah, I'm the maestro, yeah, calm, no problem, yeah. we still have time, no problem. I said, yeah, but there is nobody. And in 30 minutes, there should be 80 musicians sitting in front of their desk, warming up, etc. Yeah. A quarter to 10, nobody. 10 to 10, nobody. Five to 10, two people walked in, two people walked in. At 10 o'clock, people came. At, at, at <laughs> Five past ten. Just to make a long story short, after half an hour, the orchestra was there. Yeah. So I was like, uh, okay. Then the, the the passion was fantastic, but the sound was not good mm -hmm. because of the quality of the instruments. Ah. Quality of the instruments was not yeah. very inspiring. But the passion was there. Yeah. The passion was there. And once they started playing, it was was just great. Also for for breaks for for for, for the intermission. Uh, normally we have like a 20 minutes or 30 minutes intermission and uh, people just go to the toilet, wash their hands, have a coffee, some water mm -hmm. and then they come back, they disappeared. They went to the bars, to the cafes, <laughs> had some coffee, some, I don't know, tequila, yeah. whatever. And then they came back and then I said, okay, if this is the mentality, this is the mentality. Yeah. But again, this is 30 years ago. So I think in general, worldwide, the attitude has, has changed. Yeah. It's all more professionalized. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because people are more traveling. Mm -hmm. People are more traveling. And believe it or not, there is a Chinese invasion. Mm -hmm. In the entire world, 
yeah. you find Asian musicians that are technically wonderful, that understand classical music as no one else. Even in America, uh, in my orchestra, uh, there are a lot of a lot of Asians. I don't care. I mean, for mm -hmm. me, people are people. Uh, they are black or yellow, or I, I don't I, I don't care as long as they play well. Yeah. It's, uh, it, 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 it's, uh, it's great. So the the world wild wide level of uh, orchestras in terms of uh, playing uh, discipline uh, quality quantity. Uh, financial situation is, mm -hmm. is, is better. It's better. Okay. Uh, take you, you come across as a disciplined person. Do you, do you have rituals that help you in the morning and with whatever you do? do you have rituals? Uh, yes, apparently, yes. <laughs> I'm a little bit uh, autistic, yeah, mm -hmm. in my mind. Not autistic, I, I, I don't uh, jump off my chair and, and and go under the table and wait now, not that, mm -hmm. not that kind of autism, but, but yeah, you see, like, yeah, yeah. That, that, that kind of uh, autism, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I have, I have rituals, especially when I, when I travel and uh, the, the day of the concert, the, 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 there are rituals, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, everything has to be prepared very long in advance, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, my shoes, it's like a holy, object for me. The shoes. Yeah, my shoes. Yeah. Because the shoes, uh, a conductor is standing on his, on his feet for one, two, three, sometimes four yeah. hours. So this is very important. The clothes are very important. Uh, and I, 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 I organize everything very well in my, in my dress room, dressing room, wherever I am. And then I change as late as possible. Some conductors, when mm -hmm. the concert starts at eight o'clock, some conductors, they already change uh, at, at 7.15, 7. I, no, I go for a walk and I talk to some people and I, uh, uh, and then the very last minutes or two, three, I change and then I, I go on stage. Now, when I was, when I was working in Japan, that was a cat catastrophe business in, J in Japan. I don't know if you've been to Japan, but everything is so well organized. So from the moment you go into your, your dressing room, you're in control of someone else. Mm -hmm. Then every, literally every minute, somebody knocks on your door, maestro, 14 minutes. <laughs> maestro, then, maestro, 10 minutes, maestro, you're not dressed yet. Yeah. Please, please, yeah. dress yourself. I come back in one minute. And then they are really in, in a, in a, in a panic. They are really in a, in a, in, in a panic. So I, I have to, there in Japan and in Asia, but especially in Japan, I had to adjust my, uh, my, um, my normal, uh, a pre-concert lifestyle into something more organized and more more organic that that I didn't cause too many problems for for the Japanese people. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dick, we have uh, passed the 48 minutes, so I'm going to ask you a last question. Um, this year is your 60th birthday. You already started uh, the conversation by saying every day can be the last one. Um, how would you like to be remembered? How would I like to be remembered? I think it's, it's not so important for me to be remem remembered as a, as a person. Because for some people, I'm a great person. For some people, I'm not a great person. Some people love me. Some people hate me. So I, I, I don't care too much. Mm -hmm. I do care about uh, my footprint. And mm -hmm. my footprint in life is the music. I, I mm. wrote and I really hope that after I will be gone that that that, that people will still perform my music mm. and that my yeah. my ideas my philosophy but also my concept of what beauty can be which I translated in my music pieces can live on in the minds and the hearts of uh, other people mm -hmm. and do you know what uh, music you want to be played at your funeral? I don't care because I, I will not hear it anymore. <laughs> I really don't care. You don't, <laughs> I mean, you don't I, have your, uh, your playlist ready. No. But if there is one, one piece, yeah. and actually it, 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 it's maybe important for the others, uh, it's a song called uh, uh, Vivre. 
uh, and and it's tr it's a French song written in 1983, I think, for the Eurovision Song uh, uh, Festival, and it's translated uh, by um, Ramsey Shafi, mm -hmm. uh, a Dutch singer, and it is the text is "Laat me, laat me, laat me mijn eigen weg maar gaan, laat me, laat me, want ik heb het altijd zo gedaan." Wow. Okay. On this note, uh, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I hope you inspire uh, people who listen to also follow their passion and their dreams because uh, it creates a lot of beauty in the world. I hope you liked this episode. If you want to stay tuned and hear more personal stories of inspiring leaders, follow us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or subscribe to our YouTube channel.